Well, they say it's going to rain again. They keep changing the weather reports. Uh, it was supposed to be sunny today, and now it's dark and overcast. I was going to work on the tiny house a little bit. Now I don't know if I uh, dare uncover it. got a uh, baby cat out here in the jungle. She talks to me when I'm out here. She, actually, she wants attention. And she gets caught up in the trees in the jungle out here. But it's overcast so she can play around. I'm not going to drag her in. She always cries to be picked up when I'm out here. In the house, she doesn't want any attention at all. Outside, she always wants attention. Anyway, she's in with the chickens where there's no ticks. There, she's eating grass. Getting her vitamins today. That's awesome. Look at that jungle out there for her. So, she's out enjoying the halfway decent weather. It's a little cooler. It's like, uh, I think, 80 degrees, but not as humid, because I'm not sweating like I was before. So, now I want to show you, the last time you saw this it was pitch black out so you couldn't see a thing. Right now I'm going to start cleaning up all this garbage and prepare it for my neighbor to take away. I'm going to get the saws on, just start cutting that up and all this stuff and get it in a pile for him to take. The pallets I'm keeping, actually my pallets I'm going to be laying wood on. Um, everything is here as you see how we left it on the uh, Saturday night. <laughs> just scattered stuff everywhere so I have to clean up. But uh, fortunately we did tarp this off because Saturday night it rained and I think it rained all night long. So I am so happy we did finish this and pushed through and got it done when we did. But right now I've got to show you something. I got a new another Craigslist haul today. So let me go get that out and show you what I've got. Well, <clears throat> I went to go get some windows for free off Craigslist today and somebody had taken all the frames and the guy didn't realize it and he was apologetic about my coming out for nothing and he gave me a craftsman table saw that he picked up for free which most likely still works he figures because it's still got fresh sawdust all over it and um, the only thing he figures will happen is the previous owner knocked it over and broke off it's got a plastic base so it broke the base and that's what he figures is why the uh, previous owner gave it away. And so he gave this to me. I managed to get that in my car, believe it or not. The top comes right off. So that was, that's funny because I was looking at table saws to do my tiny home construction. I figured a table saw will help a lot while building my tiny home. What's awesome with this is the sides both open up. And extend so if this works I'm hooked up this is amazing that's really cool both sides open up and extend and also this extends out quite a ways so this saw can handle a nice full-size sheet of wood and that's really convenient now what I'm thinking about doing well, one problem is I don't have uh, a generator right now to run it. So i got to work on my generators, see if I can get something running that's big enough to power this, because it's 15 amps. And I don't have anything to run 15 amps right now. But I was looking at table saws because I need it for my construction. And for ripping some of these boards, these 2x6s that I got, some of them are still good. And I want to rip some of them into 2x4s when I do my loft upstairs. This will be perfect for that project, for ripping them nice and neat and straight. I also got, he had just ripped apart an RV himself, or a camper I should say, and he gave me a 30 gallon water tank for free. And that's a really nice little bonus, living off the grid and collecting rainwater for drinking and bathing. Every little bit helps. So another tank, that's very good to have. And also, over here, I got some shingles. He had a ton of stuff out there, but he tossed me a pack and a half of shingles 
which I will use in my gazebo, which all this free lumber I just got, I'm going to use to build a gazebo out in the middle. Basically a screened in little room where I can sit and um, read or relax or just enjoy the outdoors without bugs tearing me up. So I'm going to have a little screened room eventually, but I'm collecting the materials now. Hey, why not? It was free. So I got a pack and a half of shingles. So that and the lumber I've got everywhere. That's going to make these 2 by 6s will be the base for the flooring. And it's perfect. Nothing wrong with it for that. That's perfect. And I'm going to put it up on blocks out in the middle of the meadow. The sun came back out really weird. It's really strange. They're predicting uh, rain. Well, one weather channel says rain, the other one says no. Out here in the middle of the meadow, past the chickens, I want to have my little gazebo eventually and a nice place to sit and enjoy cooler evenings. So that's a plan I have for later. Well, right now I'm going to peel back the cover on my tiny house and start working on the flooring. Since the rain is not coming down on my head right at this minute, I'm just going to peel this tarp back a little bit ways and work backwards as I go, piece by piece, uh, just in case it does want to rain. This workbench turned out very nice. Chris finished it up for me on Saturday evening and it turned out very, very nice. And as I said, I'm going to paint the sides with oil paint too. And it'll be perfect, really good. So, thanks again goes to Chris for that, for a good job. I've uncovered the tiny house construction site here. Right now it's important for me to figure out which are the nicest looking floorboards because right now what's going to happen is I will sand these, like for example this is a really nice looking piece of wood. So that should be very visible, that should be in, a, in the, one of the most visible areas like dead center in the living room for example. The one right next to it is beautiful as well. Now I have to find any flaws because those boards will end up being hidden. Example, this piece here has some ugly flaws. Actually this has a uh, little bit of rough spot there so these can be more on outer walls or hidden areas and this can maybe be under the bathtub for example, this part where it's darkened in black or shower I should say. I've changed my mind, I'm going with a shower instead of a bathtub. There's just not enough space for the uh, for everything in here. So yeah, if this is a living thing here, this tiny home. I have a general idea of how I'm doing things but it sort of changes and flexes with time based on feedback from people and based on things I learn and based on cost as things unravel. So yeah now I'm going to take some time and choose which boards go where. This is like putting together a puzzle. Now it doesn't look like I have enough boards but the thing is these are three of these. Wait one two three one two uh I gotta do my thinking here. It's so hot, I'm not thinking clearly. Anyway, a couple of these are getting ripped in half to fill in the spaces. So, it's gonna work out. Oh yeah, two of these are getting ripped. So, for example, all these sh shift over, rip off half that board, and that goes down to the very end, and that'll fill in that gap. I'll have a little bit of piece left over, and that's how it's gonna be. So, I'm going to get to it. Okay, I think I got my floor laid out pretty well. I This is the battery room and then up to half there and halfway that way. Then it's in the living room so that floor will be partly seen out that way, that section. And then this section will be my study over to here. I might swap this board out with another once I get down there because that one's a really nice board 
but one is getting ripped for half here anyway so I need one that's only halfway nice looking it's going to be visible here so once I start laying these down I'll figure it out but this one's going to be first and then this one's next this whole boards and then I'll need a half so I'm going to slide this over and then I'm going to do some measurements and start putting in the cross bracing under here but that'll be obvious in a minute when I get this exposed I'm about to use some of that wood that I got the other day for free from the lumber yard this is a relatively clean 2x4 but I'm still going to rip off the corner where it's weathered and have a good straight square corner here or end I should say Now, I'm going to start cutting these sections off to use on my floor underneath the joints of the floorboards. So I'm going to cut a few of these and then I'll be back in a few minutes. Boy, it is humid and hot. It's starting to rain again. So I'm sort of rushing a little bit. But here's what I'm looking at. I've got, I've been walking on my boards, try to keep my house clean inside. <laughs> so I've got these supports. I've put a line where the end of the 4x8 sheet will be. And you can see the X marks a spot here on the, uh, can you see it? Right there's the line, right there. And what I've done, you can see I staggered these boards all along this edge so that the edge will lay of this board will run here and the other one will still have an overlap and be because I had to put two screws in from each side I had to stagger them over a bit I switched to two by sixes so I can still get two screws in and still have a bit of overlap and a lot more support under there and these are those boards I got from that lumber yard so I'm giving them a good brush down and a cleaning and use them so now I can slide my first sheet in and line it up here and see how it's going to be. That's, that's ready right there. So this one is actually ready to be put down as soon as I line this up. I want to eye it up first though. Make sure I did my work right. The first board is the most crucial. I'm going to take the most time. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I got everything lined up all right. Yeah, it's going to work. Alright, so that'll be the first board and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to silicone or caulk, I keep saying silicone, I'm going to caulk underneath all the, on all the floor joists before I set that down in place and screw it in. So I'm going to go ahead now and caulk that in place, screw that board in place, and then uh, Actually, yeah, I'm going to have to do one piece at a time. And I'll have to do the next piece, the next piece, and the next piece as I go along here. And um, rip a half piece. I uh, will only work a section at a time, as I said, until I get this... Well, it depends on this weather. So, I ended on 
stagger this way so I'm gonna have to put that other board in over there before I continue on the um, the other no wait that'll be a half yeah good thing I'm thinking now out loud because I'm gonna start with a half over here so before I go ahead and nail this down I've got to go ahead and put the support board that's gonna go under that seam over there which will be a half board so I have to move this back put that other support in before I go any further good thing I thought about that so I'll cut that and put it in first I got that other support on so I can go ahead and secure this board as I said I'm going to caulk all the way around first and all the seams just for extra airtight bug proofness whatever weather proofing everything proofing Let's see this goes to here two four six eight. here any little particles of wood in a way I gotta remove make sure I have a flat surface for my floor Sure, this is overkill, but again, I want to have it. Each compartment will be a separate compartment of its own, sealed off from the other, which is a good thing. pretty much it for that tube. Well, it's getting dark. Hope I don't get cut off by the rain. So now the complicated part, trying to do this alone. Get this piece up on there. Smear some of the coke. Doing this.
centered. Slam go up. That's lined up. It's going to that's tongue and groove, so there's an overlap there. All right, I think I can screw this piece down. Before I do that, I'm just going to make sure the other one lines up next to that nicely, and then I'll screw it down. This feels really solid. There's no flex, no bend, no nothing. I think it's going to be all right. This is really feeling solid. I'm feeling good about this now. What I'm using this board for is to line up and find my floor joist. And I'm just sinking the screw in a tiny bit because this will be my actual house floor. These self-tapping screws are not the easiest to work with. Oh, this feels good. It's nice and solid. Just countersinking a tiny bit into there. Yeah, that floor feels good. Good and solid. I'm feeling confident about it now. Now, I'm not going all the way to the edge, so I might have enough flex, I'm hoping, to shove that up into here. But first, I gotta go and put the support boards under that lip over there before I can go ahead and shove these together. If the rain holds off, I'll get half the trailer done today. The problem is I don't have the bolts for the second piece to bolt these two halves together, so uh, I do have screws that are long enough, but I wanted to bolt it as well, so I'm not sure if I'll have to wait for payday for that. hate to go so close to the edge on this because the wood splits up a little. I should have put a another lip under there. I could always put another piece of wood under for that to screw down to. Or I can go sideways, but this is going to be in the living room. And this is going to be visible. I don't want it to bend upwards on me. Yeah, I don't like how that peels up on the edge right there. I don't like that at all. I think I'll only on the lips. I don't know. I think the best is I'm going to have to put a bead of uh, glue down on the lips. Or put a piece of wood on the inside of each of these edges. 
to screw this onto on the outside edge of each piece because when you screw onto the edge of plywood the lip pops up it, it creates a uh, it breaks it upwards I don't like that at all well I'm gonna prepare the next piece just hope and praying it doesn't rain right now Mosquitoes are moving in. Now, as I did with the other, I have to put a cross brace in here at four foot over so that when I drop these boards in, I won't be blocked off from doing it. And I'm thinking, I fear, that might be the end for today. It's looking dark. I don't know what time it is, but it shouldn't be that dark this early. Well, maybe it is. It might even be seven o'clock. I'm gonna have to go check. But anyway, I'll have this section done except for ripping that. I might get that piece ripped. See how it goes yet with the uh, daylight and the rain. It's looking really dark. get that seam together. I'm gonna work on that. Just trying to get that tight. I don't know if this will show up on camera but all I got was two boards in and the supports for them. 
This was a nightmare. That tongue and groove did not want to go together. I beat on it and pounded on it. I took it apart again. I worked a screwdriver through the tongue and groove and I beat on it some more and I pounded on it and I, I've, I've got about a uh, just under a quarter inch gap. I can't get that in there. I tried and tried and tried and with the glue and the caulk drying on me and it was starting to rain I just said okay I'll have to put wood filler in there and put it in. Sad but it was raining and uh, I gotta cover this up. It's dark out. Actually the fireflies are out. I don't know if you'll see that. Oops. Anyway the fireflies are out all over. That's uh it's after eight and I still have to put these boards over these gaps and cover this up for the night. Because tomorrow morning I'm going to get another load of that scrap wood and hopefully work towards getting the lumber for the framing for this house. Now you will notice there's a offset here. The two halves are not yet screwed together. I have to wait till payday to get, or in, I don't know, somehow get some money, sell some. I got all kinds of stuff on Craigslist right now for sale. But anyway, I gotta get some bolts to put those two together. And I'm not gonna work on the back half of this till I get those bolts. I can work on getting the boards ready and cut and prepared, but I can't put those together until I get those bolts. So I'm sort of at a standstill for now. Anyway, I'm going to put these, uh, well I can cut this front half board next time I open this up. And as long as it took me to put down two boards, poof, unbelievable. All afternoon into, in, into the evening. But granted, I did, I did take uh, rough, filthy lumber, cleaned the lumber, measured it, cut it, put it in there as a extra support. But I'll tell you what, this thing is a, uh, let me kick off my feet. This thing is solid. There's no flex, no give, no squeaky. This is going to be a very solid floor. I'm very comfortable with this now. I feel very good about this. My only regret is when I had these two apart, I wish I had put where I had this over this uh, support board, I wish I had put some screws in there because now I don't know which way. What I did here is where I saw where this board is in further. Oh, mosquitoes. I was able to put a screw in here. This one was out further, I didn't want to risk it because I don't want to split the wood. This one's in further, I put a screw in here. Over here, stupidly, it's too late. But, um, I did glue this seam, which I'm probably not going to do with the next one because that might have been the problem. A friend of mine said that might have been, <sighs> mosquitoes, might have been part of the trouble with the um, reason that won't go together. Although I scraped it out and I tried and tried and tried, I couldn't get that in all the way. It doesn't look too bad. And I can use wood filler on it. I'm going to sand this whole floor anyway. If it was a subfloor, boy, I guess it's time to go in. They just came out in full force. Anyway, if that was just a subfloor, it wouldn't matter. But um, I'm uh, well. I'm going to cover this up. But I feel good. It feels solid. It feels very, very solid. I am impressed with how rigid this is. So I'm really confident that my floor is going to hold up now.